we get into the habit, we are bound to succeed. I love what Father George just said. And it re really could be the title of the sermon today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. One of the most disappointing and most heartbreaking realities for me is when I hear people, both Christian and non-Christian, describe God's Holy Church and those members of His Holy Church as hypocrites and as being hypocritical and not reflecting what they proclaim to believe. I once had a conversation with a young man who was searching to find a church to attend. And although he had occasionally attended various churches while he was growing up, he had never formally been baptized. And his family had never been a regular member of any single church community. And now, as a young adult, seeking to learn more about the Christian faith, he wanted to finally get baptized, and he desired to attend church on a regular basis. However, in our conversation, he told me that he was struggling, because he said that as he got to know the people in these different church communities that he was visiting, he found that the majority of them did not reflect the principles of Christianity that he was learning about and that he was trying to apply to his own life. And I think that at some point in all of our lives, we've all experienced the same level of disappointment, haven't we? Especially when it comes to how people reflect their faith to the world. But the gospel lesson that we heard this morning seems to address this very issue. It's often referred to as the golden rule. And you all know it. Do good unto others as you would have them do unto you. After Jesus chose his 12 disciples in the gospel of St. Luke, it says that he began to preach to his disciples along with the multitude of people from all over Judea and all over Jerusalem and Lebanon. And he said things to him like, to them, like, love your enemies and bless those who curse you. And if someone strikes you on the cheekbone, then turn the other cheek also and give generously to everyone without expecting anything in return. And at one point, he said to those 12 apostles and those disciples and all those who were with them that just as you want men to do to you, you also are to do to them. The golden rule. And the beauty and the importance of applying this golden rule to our own lives is that it takes away the need for meaningless policies and a stringent set of laws concerning personal conduct that are often misconstrued and often argued to meet our own personal agendas. No, the beauty of this golden rule is that it provides for us a balanced way of life. And it offers us a way to measure our life so that everyone will know his or her role in society and that everyone will have the means or the foundation to handle any given situation that they may find themselves in. And this foundation cannot and will not ever be broken no matter how hard anybody may try because it's a foundation that's given to us directly from God. In essence, it says that if there is someone we don't want, 
that if there is something that we don't want our neighbor to do to us, then we should remember not to do it to them. And if there is something that we would like our neighbors to do for us, then we must strive to do it for them. It seems like such an easy concept, this golden rule, but of course, it's a very difficult concept to actually put into practice. However, it's not impossible, especially if you consider the source that it came from. And especially if you consider that as Christians, we are called to a higher standard. Christ said in the Sermon on the Mount, one of my favorite passages in the Bible, from the book of Matthew, that we are called to be perfect, just as our Father in heaven is perfect. And so as Christians, we should always strive for perfection and nothing less. And then at the end of the Gospel lesson this morning, Jesus sums up all of his teaching by telling his new apostles and his disciples and all those who were with them what they can expect by loving their enemies and by doing good to others and by lending and hoping for nothing in return. He said that the reward for doing these things will be great. And he said that they will be sons of the Most High. Or in other words, they will be like God. In theological terms, this is called theosis, or becoming by grace what God is by nature. And it's through the process of this theosis that human beings come to know and experience what it means to be fully human, the created image of God. And it's through our communion with Jesus Christ that God shares himself with the whole human race. And how different would the world be if all Christians really worked to achieve this in a real way, reflecting God to the world through their actions, and through their words, and through their daily activity. Because this, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, is our goal. And this goal is the perfection that we are called to strive for. Because as someone once said, you may be the only experience of God that some people will ever know. What a powerful concept that is to think about. And then the very last thing that we heard in the gospel this morning is that we should be merciful just as our Father in heaven is merciful. And so the question for us, as we reflect on this gospel message, this golden rule, and the pursuit of reflecting God to the whole world around us, is how exactly do we go about extending God's mercy to those that we come in contact with? And I think St. Paul, in his letters of encouragement to those churches that he visited when he was on his missionary travels, best sums up, best sums up this goal when he says that we should, number one, let no corrupt word proceed from our mouths, but that we should only speak words that are necessary for the edification of others. And if we do that, then we, we will be imparting the grace of the Holy Spirit upon those who hear us. And then he said, number two, in another place, that we should let our speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt. I love that. So that others 
will come to know the true faith. St. Paul truly understood the power of the spoken, the spoken word and what it has and how it affects those around us. And so, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us hear the words of this gospel message this morning and let us meditate on God's golden rule to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. And let us remember today as Christians that we are truly called to a higher standard of living and that we have a great responsibility here on this earth because people are watching us and people are seeking and people are hurting so bad in this world and people are in need of the truth about God and you never know you may be the only truth of God that someone ever experiences in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen